This year's BlizzCon brought forth a lot of major updates for the upcoming StarCraft II expansion Heart of the Swarm, including some new units and upgrades for all three of the races. We'll be going over those changes here to give you guys a better idea of what to expect in the upcoming expansion. The first of the new Protoss units is going to be the Tempest. The Tempest is the new capital ship of the Protoss army and as such has replaced the carrier. Yes, the carrier will no longer be in the game. The Tempest is chiefly an anti-air unit with a very strong splash damage anti-air attack, making it especially effective against Mutalisks. While the Tempest does have a ground attack, it is not nearly as strong as its anti-air attack, nor does it have splash damage. The next to the Protoss unit is the Replicant. The Replicant is a caster unit built from the robotics facility and has one ability. It can transform itself into any non-massive unit you have vision of in the game. While that is incredibly strong, a major downside of course to the Replicant is going to be its cost. Currently costing 200 minerals and resources and a total of 4 population, this is going to be a very expensive unit and any units you transform into you are going to want to make sure that they are high priority as well. It is also important to note that whatever unit you transform into, you will receive the possible upgrades for that unit, especially for those specialty units. Meaning specifically, if you transform into a siege tank, you will have siege tech research. If you transform into a banshee, you will have cloak research as well. This is going to be a very strong tactical unit added to the Protoss army. The last of the units being added to the Protoss army is the Oracle. The Oracle is an additional caster unit which will be used primarily as a scouter and harasser. The first of its abilities is Entomb, a spell that can temporarily block mineral fields from being harvested. Now this Entomb can be destroyed by either enemy fire or by being timed out. The next ability, Preordain, will grant the Protoss player a vision of targeted enemy building. This also allows the player to see what units or technologies are being researched from the targeted building. And lastly, the Oracle has Phase Shift, an ability that, upon targeting a structure, will phase it out completely, preventing it from doing or receiving any damage, also stopping any upgrades or training from that building. And like the Tempest replaced the carrier, the Oracle will be replacing the Mothership. In addition to new units, the Protoss have also received a major upgrade in the form of new abilities for the Nexus. The first of these abilities is Arc Shield. The Arc Shield ability will temporarily add additional shield and building armor to any targeted building. It will also receive a weapon very similar to a Photon Cannon, with the notable exception that this weapon may only be targeting light units. This is meant to help the Protoss players buy time when raided by light unit armies from the enemy. The second ability that the Nexus has received is Mass Recall. Mass Recall works exactly as you expect it to. It will allow you to recall Protoss infantry from anywhere on the field battle, bringing it straight to the Nexus. The one minor drawback to this is that recall units will be stunned temporarily once they are warped in. The first of the new Terran units is the Warhound. The Warhound is a small walking ground mech unit that wields a very effective anti-air weapon. It is meant to fill the role that the Thor had in Wings of Liberty. It is going to be especially effective against large groups of light air units such as Mutilus. It is smaller in size than the Thor, however it is much quicker as well, so what it lacks in range and size it makes up for in, a, in a mobility. In addition to this, the Warhound has a ground attack that does additional damage to mechanical units. This will make it effective against Protoss armies as well as Terran armies building lots of factory based units. With the Warhound taking its place, the Thor has been moved into what's known as an Uber unit. It's going to be very reminiscent of the Odin character in the Wings of Liberty campaign. It's going to have a very effective AoE spell that deals over 200 damage over 12 seconds, as well as ground damage of 60 times 2. The next new unit added to the Terran army is the Shredder. Now the Shredder itself does not have an attack, however when set to stationary mode it has got a very effective area of effect radiation ability. In its design, it is meant to replicate the Spider Mines or Lurker in StarCraft 1, in the sense that it is all about map control and positioning. 
One very important note about the Shredder is that if friendly units are within its radius, the area of effect radiation damage becomes deactivated. So this makes it so this is not a unit that can be added to the Ball of Death for Terran players, but again, is more about base defense, and whenever your units are nearby, the Shredder will turn itself off. In Heart of the Swarm, the Hellion will be receiving an upgrade. This is going to allow it to transform into what is known as a Battle Hellion and will be very reminiscent of the Fire Bat. It will be sacrificing speed to gain a lot more durability. This will make it much more effective come late game against the Charged Zealot Archon unit composition of the Protoss. Terran players will also be seeing some changes to the abilities of their units in the upcoming expansion. First and foremost, the Ghost Cloak will be modified slightly. It is no longer a toggle effect, instead it will be a one-time energy cost that lasts for a specific duration. The Battlecruiser will be gaining a speed boost ability called Redline Reactor. This is going to be governed by a cooldown. And finally, the Reaper will no longer have a special building attack, but instead it will have health regeneration increase. Um, while it is out of combat. So this will allow you to quickly move in, uh, do some sort of worker harass, leave the base, and then regenerate the health on your Reaper. The first of the new Zerg units is known as the Viper. The Viper is a spell caster with three abilities attached to it. The first of these abilities is known as Blind and Cloud, which will reduce the attack range of all ground units underneath the cloud to melee range. This is going to be very effective at getting your Zerg units up close to range units. The next ability is Abduct, which allows you to pull units away from your enemy's army into the Zerg Swarm. This is going to be very effective for things such as Colossus and Siege Tanks, getting them away from those Death Balls and right into the heart of your Zerglings. And then lastly, the Viper is a detector, but it also has what is known as Ocular Parasite. This is an ability which will allow you to turn any non-massive friendly unit into a detector, making it so that your enemy does not know which one of your units has cloak detection on it. The next new Zerg unit is known as the Swarm Host. The Swarm Host is very reminiscent of the Lurker in that it burrows and then does damage. However, instead of shooting out spikes like the Lurker did, the Swarm Host will actually send out waves of Locust. Now the Locust is a melee unit with 90 hit points and it will move itself to whatever rally location you set it to. During the demonstration, the Swarm Host was touted as a Siege Breaker. We will have to see how effective it is at that. In addition to these two new units, Zerg players will be receiving some new ability upgrades. The Corruptor's Corruption has been replaced with an ability known as Siphon. This allows Corruptors to target buildings and slowly damage them. This damage will then be converted into resources for the Zerg player. Also, the Ultralisk is getting a major upgrade known as Burrow Charge, which allows the Ultra to dive underground and instantly surface at a target. This is going to be great for breaking siege lines. The Baneling will receive what is effectively Tunneling Claws, much like the Roach has, allowing Banelings to move while burrowed. And then lastly, the Hydralis will be getting a new upgrade that allows them to move faster while not on creep. The one thing that the Zerg players will be losing is the Overseer. The Overseer is no longer part of the Zerg Swarm. It has been replaced by the abilities that the Viper possesses. Alright guys, so those are all the major upgrades we did get for the upcoming Heart of the Swarm expansion at this year's BlizzCon. Now I do of course realize that anything discussed here is subject to change, this is what we're currently looking at. There are certainly some very new exciting units and abilities that will be added to StarCraft 2. I am very much looking forward to see how the professional players end up utilizing these new tactics. As always guys, if you like the content please subscribe, thank you for watching, keep watching and keep owning.